Hello and thank you. Uh, I'm going to present, keep presenting a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, I've been working on the Coquitlam River since 2001, uh, myself and my various colleagues. We uh, were responsible for enumerating and making population estimates on all uh, five species of salmon that come into the river with significant numbers to be able to make a population estimate. We don't do population estimates for sockeye, for example, because their numbers are so small. So this includes chum, coho, pink, chinook, and steelhead. Uh, this program was initiated by BC Hydro back in 2001 to study the impacts of uh, the two different flow regimes they're experimenting with. Up until 2008, BC Hydro released a much more limited amount of water into the river from their dam. Uh, that changed when they completed the seismic upgrade and since 2009 the amount of water they release into the river has increased. It depends on the month but it's generally speaking about two to four times as much water they're releasing year round. So we started enumerating adult salmon back in 2001 before the increase in flow so we could compare the before and after impacts of the uh, the flow tree. Uh, we head out in the fall. We start our surveys in mid-September and they run usually until mid-January. That's when the coho finally disappear. And then in the spring we start up again in mid-June, or sorry, mid-March and we go to mid-June and we count steelhead. Uh, we do this in a couple of different ways in terms of our surveys. Yeah, we have a couple different techniques in the fall. We generally walk most of the river and we combine that with a snorkel swim. So we'll put on wet or dry suits, <coughs> float down the river counting adult salmon. Uh, when we enumerate steelhead, we actually use the reds that they create. Now, red is the nest that the salmon builds in the gravel. That's spelled with two D's, R-E-D-D. -D. So we count those and then we extrapolate a population estimate from that because there's, generally speaking, a fairly consistent number of fish that create reds. Uh, the, oh yeah, the area that we cover stretches from the confluence of the Coquitlam River and Scott Creek. If you don't know where that is, that's down by Cates Park. So we do the entire river from there all the way up to the face of the dam. Uh, we also do all the little uh, side channel habitats, such as, you know, in the Oxbow or up by Coquitlam River Park. And we even dip into some of the small tributaries, like Marquardt or Partridge or even Palaka Creek. <clears throat> so we cover a lot of territory. And we've been doing it for 20 years. And while we're out this here or out there, people often ask me and my crew, like, how are the fish doing? How many are coming back this year? What's it like? So you're about to find out. This next slide has a lot of numbers. Uh, <laughs> hope it doesn't look too confusing, but it's actually very straightforward. You can see on this one side here, this is the survey year. Uh, this line demarcates this is the first treatment, so when they were re re uh, releasing a smaller amount of water, and this is after the dam and the treatment two, it's called. So all this data is during uh, the increased flow release from BC Hydro. So this is for the fall and winter spawners. So we've got chum, pink, coho, and chinook. In this first column, uh, it says it's population estimate. So that is our final estimate that we make after you know, the whole season's gone by. We've enumerated all the fish and we do the statistical magic. It creates this number. And this is the uh, peak count number. So the maximum amount of fish we observed in a given survey period, which is once a week we go up. So uh, you can see it tends to vary quite a bit from year to year. You know, we have huge years where you know, almost 80,000 chum show up, and then you can get a quite a smaller year where you know, there's only about 7,000. <clears> uh, pink, of course, only come in every second year, so that's why there's those gaps in between each year. And in 2017, we didn't uh, manage to get out at all. You can see down here, so this is the average amount of 
Chum adults that returned during treatment one, and this is the average that have returned during treatment two. So across the board, for all those four species, you can see there's been an increase in the number of adults returning to Coquitlam River since BC Hydro decided to uh, put more water into the river. So that's a very encouraging trend, and it's been pretty consistent. Uh, I would say Chum and Coho specifically have really, really seemed to hold really strong numbers since that time, uh, especially the coho. You can see that we almost uh, quadrupled their numbers. Uh, since the flow increase, that's likely we suspect a result of their uh, life histories where they actually spend an entire year in the river. So they really get the benefit of all that extra water, whereas Chom and Pink and Cohos are should have, as soon as they emerge from the gravel, they just head right out to the ocean. Fraser River. So yeah, that's all very encouraging. As you can see, we do all, some years we'll almost get 100,000 fish back to the river. So uh, yeah, all in all, it's I'd say it's kind of a good news story that all the four populations or the four species that come back in big numbers are are doing pretty well. I would say according to this data, anyways. Of course, there's lots of other factors involved. You know, when they go to the ocean, all these things we can't control, but Generally speaking, it's pretty positive, so you can uh, feel good about that. Everyone that takes care of the river and all that kind of stuff. It's not just the water, of course, it's released. It's all the people that are involved as well. And uh, the next slide, I'm going to talk about steelhead. So steelhead are the anadromous form of rainbow trout. And they're the fisherman's dream. If you, people, I see people come from all over the world. Europe, Africa, Asia, just to fish for steelhead in British Columbia. They're just a legendary, legendary fish. Uh, and we've had a fairly consistently healthy population across uh, the years that I've been working here. Now, steelhead generally don't come in these huge numbers like the other Pacific salmon that come in there. Generally speaking, a lot smaller populations. They also spend a year or two in the river before they go to the ocean. And uh, really interesting thing that I like about steelhead in the Coquitlam River anyways is I would say about 70 to 80 percent of them spawn in the exact same spot every year. It's just incredible. You can literally this one little square meter of area like every single year you're going to find a fish in that exact spot. They really are highly selective about where they like to spawn and they just spawn in these the perfect spot anyways. They really seem to pick it out. So again this kind of compares uh, treatment one and treatment two that bars at the very end. Uh, it's a little deceiving. Uh, so, sorry, I should explain. These numbers in the bar in red are just, just the actual adult estimate. So that's how many adults we figure came back every year. So you can see the numbers are quite a bit lower. They're not in the thousands, they're in the hundreds. And if you look at the treatment one versus treatment two at the end, you can see in terms of our adult estimates, it's actually dipped a bit for treatment two. Whereas you look at the amount of reds they create, which is this blue line, it's pretty much the same. Uh, so that number is a bit deceiving because of this enormous, huge population we had that year. So it kind of throws it off. But generally speaking, from what we've observed, the steelhead population has been quite consistent for the last 25, or since 2005, since we've been doing it. So almost 20 years. And uh, yeah, that's pretty encouraging. Uh, Steelhead are, you know, they are really targeted by anglers. Anglers really like to catch them. Uh, steelhead also come up when the water is getting quite warm, so when the waters are a little lower, so they uh, have a few more threats to them. But uh, generally speaking, it's a pretty healthy population for the size of the Coquitlam River. Uh, that's my last slide. Yeah. So all in all. Just to sort of sum up, the population of adults in Coquitlam River is pretty good. I'd say it's, it's quite healthy for a stream of its size. The populations we're seeing are basically the carrying capacity of the river, you know, which means how much can the river possibly hold and produce realistically. So